When we buy a new phone, we typically only compare the features and specs of the phone. Now what about after sales care and repair service of the brand we are buying into? If anything goes wrong and we need to claim warranty, how easy is it for us to get the phone fixed? In this video, I'm going to share with you my experience of sending my Galaxy A11 back to Samsung Care for warranty repair. Hi everyone, welcome to another Sky Perspective video. So my story begins with my Samsung A11 vibration motor not working. This phone is still under warranty. So I went to Samsung Australia website and searched for Samsung phone repair. I saw this book a repair via Australia post option, but I don't feel comfortable with simply posting my phone back. So I started a chat session with an online Samsung representative who was very helpful. He patiently listened to my issues, taught me how to check my phone's serial number and asked me to register my phone on my Samsung account and then explained to me the process of my phone repair. After that, I told him I'm not comfortable mailing in my phone. So he made an appointment for me to drop it at a Samsung store at Westfield Shopping Centre. Westfield is one of the largest shopping centres in Australia. Now during the appointment, the Samsung rep at the store checked my phone and said, This is the first time I've actually encountered a phone vibration not working, which is weird. And then after that, he processed my warranty claim. After a while, he showed me a long page of terms and conditions. This is a summary of some of the terms. The first one, user-generated data. That means we need to back up all our data because all the data will be wiped. Second one, removal of SIM and memory card and password locks. That means remove any locks or password so that the technicians can actually access the phone. Third one, device diagnostics. That means they are just letting us know that they will be running a diagnostics program on the phone. Fourth one, Use of refurbished goods and parts, that means they may use recycled parts to fix the phone. Original parts will not be returned to us. But wait, I'm sending in my phone for warranty repair, and they are using refurbished parts? Hmm, this is something we might want to take note if we are thinking about sending our phone back for warranty repair. Anyway, let's move on. Fifth one, software updates, that means they will by default load the latest version of the software onto the phone, which is good. Next one, accessories. Don't give them any accessories like phone cases and screen protectors because Samsung may not return them back to you. And the last one caught my attention. We may have to incur $66 labor fee if the fault or damage is caused by the user, such as water damage and so on. Now, $66 is a big chunk of my Galaxy A11 cost price because this A11 is a budget phone. I might as well buy a new phone. But anyway, knowing it's definitely not my fault with the vibration motor not working, I signed my life away on the dotted line of this service authorization notice. The Samsung rep at the store put my phone into a drawstring pouch and told me my phone would be posted back to me in 3-5 to five days and gave me a repair service number card. Six working days later, this came in the mail. To my surprise, my phone came back in quite a nice packaging. And when I opened the box, I was greeted with yet another delight with these two words. I'm home. Pretty nice touch. Samsung knows how we feel when we don't have our phones for a few days. My A11 is wrapped in a drawstring pouch strapped down with a stretch plastic tie down on a cardboard, very securely. Even though my Galaxy A11 is the cheapest phone in the low-end A series line, they still treat my phone with care, which I'm pretty happy about. And then there is this repair report paperwork, which shows the part that were replaced. To my surprise, a lot of the internal parts were replaced, not just the vibration motor. I googled the part numbers and I found a few of them. They replaced one of the circuit board, vibration motor, the battery and even the front LCD display panel. 
Don't know why they have to replace the LCD display when the fault is lies with the vibration motor. Anyway, from an aesthetic and unboxing experience point of view, the phone came back looking like a brand new phone. I guess it's because the screen was replaced. I'm pretty happy with Samsung Care overall. By the way, have you sent your phone back for repair before? Share your stories with us by leaving your comments down below. Tell us the brand of your phone and how good their service is. And if you have any questions about my phone repair, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below too. On my channel, unlike typical tech reviews, I share stories of my personal tech gear in a vlogging style. Occasionally, I'll share productive tips on how I use technology to simplify my life. If you find videos like this unique and interesting, do consider subscribing to my channel now. I'm very happy to see my channel growing progressively. A big thank you to all of you who have subscribed. I hope you like this one and please remember to like this video. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.